welcome to bsc statistics students i'll explain uh, one more problem in the test for proportion case you see the problem it also includes uh, confidence intervals you see the problem a manufacturer claims that 2% of the product is defective so directly proportion proportionate value is given proportionate number of defective items are given hence it is proportionate test simply you have to can identify it is a test for proportion whether single proportion or not we see in one day's production of 200 items only 8 are defectives so he was considered one day's production one day's production of 200 items a sample number of items 200 items are considered and out of which uh, they examined and only 8 are defectives so n is equal to 200 x is equal to 8 n is equal to 200 and x is equal to 8 so you can calculate small p you leave it and uh, test his claim of the production of defective items are 2 percent or more at 5 percent level of significance you leave 5 percent level of significance see the question test his claim of production of defective items are 2 percent or more 2 percent or more okay so therefore what is his claim the manufacturer claims that 2 percent of the product is defective 2 percent of the product is defect uh, is defective and that is uh, the claim of the manufacturer Hence, it is a population proportion. This one, 2 percent is population proportion. I see uh, the values and so that I explain uh, everything. Now, based on the information that uh, I again uh, uh, read the problem, in one day's production of 200 items, only 8 are defectives. In one day's production of 200, 8 are defectives. That is, n is equal to 200 x is equal to 8 here the problem is uh, if you consider attribute x uh, is number of defectives remember number of defectives okay right so small p is equal to sample proportion x by n 8 by 200 0.04 okay now what is capital p is given by the manufacturer that is the statement given for entire process whatever is specified for entire process that is the reason why you are considering it is a population proportion defective proportion of defective items capital p is equal to 2 percent that is 2 by 100 0.02 that is out of every 100 items two items maximum two items are going to be considered as defective items that is his claim manufacturer claim is 2 percent items are defective only that is the 2 percent so q is equal to obviously 1 minus p 0 0.98 leave it and null hypothesis now we consider four important points in which one first point null hypothesis h naught capital p is equal to how much the value 2 percent 0 0.02 that is proportion of defective items are 2 percent proportion of defective items are 2 percent we are not considering any other statement impartial statement you have to consider and alternative hypothesis h1 capital p greater than 0 0.02 you know, see in the problem whether it is any evidence to consider clearly the to test his claim the production of defective items are two percent or more at five percent level two percent or more that is you have to consider an alternative 2 percent or more than 2 percent in null hypothesis 2 percent only the proportion of defective items are 2 percent in the null hypothesis proportion of defective items are more than 2 percent in the alternative hypothesis hence it is considered as greater than hence it is one tile test p greater than 0 0.02 hence it is one tile test right so null and alternative have considered now test a statistic under h naught what is test statistic under H0? Z, as usual, the formula Z is equal to small p minus p0 by capital P0 by square root of capital P0 Q0 capital Q0 divided by n, which follows n01. Substitute all the values small p 0 
capital P naught zero point zero two square root divided by square root of capital P naught zero point zero two into zero point nine eight divided by hundred is equal to two point zero two. So now you have to after calculating Z, what you have to do is you have to go for comparison and conclusion, or else we can call inference. So in the inference or comparison and conclusion, first we have to calculate modulus of Z. Z is 2.02, therefore modulus of Z is also 2.02. If it is negative, you have to consider positive modulus, since modulus. And then Z alpha, Z alpha for 5% level of significance, it is given in the problem, test at 5% level. So 5% level of significance and for one tile test, one tile test means P greater than 0 0.02, hence it is one tile test. So therefore, from the standard normal tables, Z alpha is equal to 1.645. These are the tables available. Therefore, modulus of Z is 2.02. Z alpha is 1.645. So it is obviously greater than, modulus of Z is greater than Z alpha, which implies H0 is rejected. What is meant by H0 is rejected? So what is H0? H0 is the proportion of defective items are 2%. As the manufacturer claims that proportion of defective items are 2 percent in the product. Therefore, it is rejected. That is H1 is accepted. What is H1? The proportion of defective items are more than 2 percent. That is 0 0.02. More than 2 percent of items are defectives. So therefore, H0 is rejected means manufacturer claim is not correct. That is Proportion of defective items are more than 2% in the production process. Have you understand? This is up to the testing hypothesis. Then we will ask one more question that is uh, find 95% of confidence intervals or confidence limits for the population proportion of defective items. Actually this is going to be done if H0 is rejected otherwise uh, no, uh, no required no requirement, no need to calculate the 95% confidence limits. Confidence limits uh, specifies that uh, the proportion of defective items uh, lies in between one particular interval, in which particular interval we see that, right. Now you see the calculation of 95% of confidence limits, uh, it is nothing but it is very simple. 95% confidence limits for the population proportion of defective items capital P are going to be calculated by small p plus or minus that is minus 1.96 this is the value of 5% level of significance you can easily recognize. So for 95% confidence limits 5% values is go, values are, are going to be considered 1.96 in square root of p cron q cron by n what is meant by p cron? Small capital P cron that is capital P estimation. Estimation estimated value of capital P is small p, p c letter. And Q cron is equal to 1 minus P cron. So therefore, it is uh, 1 minus P Q is equal to 1 minus divided by n. Similarly, with plus sign P plus 1.96 square root of P cron Q cron by n. That is the formula is P minus 1.96 square root of P cron Q cron by N comma small p plus 1.96 square root of P cron Q cron by N. This is what uh, the 95% confidence intervals for the population proportion capital P. So therefore you immediately change P cron is equal to small p, Q cron is equal to 1 minus small p which are uh, estimated values. And P cron is equal to, therefore, small p value is 0 0.04. Q cron is equal to 1 minus 0 0.04 is 0 0.96. So, these are the values of P cron, Q cron. That is P estimated, Q estimated values. Capital P, capital Q estimated values. After that, just substitution. It is a, well, it is a simple part of substitution. You see how it is going to be substituted and uh, getting the value. Limits are confidence, 95% confidence limits are 0 0.04 that is small p minus 1.96 into square root of p cron 0 0.04 q cron 0 0.96 divided by 200 
comma simply add now plus 0 0.04 plus 1.96 into square root of 0 0.04 into 0 0.96 divided by 200. That is, uh, if you calculate this, this, if you simplify this value, you will get 0 0.0128 comma 0 0.0672. So, hardly it is 1.2 percent and 6.7 percent. The number of defectives are going to be lie in between 1.2 percent and 0 0.6 percent, 6 percent, 1.2 percent, 6.7 percent approximately you can consider that is number of defectives uh, lies in between this particular percentage that is 95 percent confidence limits for the population proportion of defective items uh, it is 1.28 and 6.72 percent you see you should remember the point clearly in percentage the number of defective items uh, would lie in between the this particular percentage that is the important purpose of calculating the confidence intervals. Hope you understand the confidence intervals also I have explained in this particular class. Thank you. Thank you very much.